Welcome to the Litera Children's Book Festival. Joining us from Belgium today is beloved children's book author and illustrator, Ruth Willocks. Welcome, Ruth. Oh, hello. So five, of, um, five of your books were published in Romania. Yes. Uh, we have a series about siblings, Luke and Lottie, meant for children aged three to five. So I'm going to show you the Romanian, some of the Romanian covers so that our readers know what we're talking about. <laughs> uh, they are very nice. I have read them to my son. I have a younger, younger son and uh, he loves them very much. So tell us, how did you start writing children's books? Do you remember how you published your first book and which one was it? Well, the first one was uh, We Be Is In Love. And actually it was quite an, an, an accident that I started writing books because uh, I was uh, in the United States with my husband. He was there for his job and I was uh, there with two little children. So I had something to do for myself. So I started taking uh, uh, lessons in uh, drawing and I really loved it. So I thought, well, maybe I can try that uh, one time. So I uh, called uh, an editor in Belgium, which was Clavis, and they told me that they had a contest every year. So I, I just uh, made a book and sent it there. So, and that's how I was discovered actually. So. Yeah, that sounds, so, sounds fabulous. So we yes. have, um, uh, we have these four books about the, the four seasons with Leti and Luca that were translated in Romanian. We have, uh, I think, five books about holidays and celebrations. This is yes. the one about Christmas. Um, we have about Easter, Halloween. Uh, what else? The festivities. <laughs> yes, uh, the carnival. Yeah. Will you tell us more about this, uh, well, this celebration? Because we don't have it in Romania. Oh, you don't celebrate carnival? No. So, well, we dress up and uh, we go to uh, in town. There is uh, usually a, a, a party going on for little children. And then they can, um, you know, like dress dress themselves up. And um, they're, uh, oh, I don't need, I don't know how to explain that in English. Uh, there are people everywhere and music and they throw uh, candies and it really it's 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 quite a, a festival for the children. So it's just... a, new, a new occasion for them to receive sweets, right? <laughs> yes, well, they can throw apples also, but that's a bit <laughs> dangerous, I guess. And when does it take place? Is it during summer or winter? No, it's or... February. It's, February. It's in a few, in a few weeks, actually, so... Yeah. Is it uh, by any chance at the beginning of um, at Lent when people start fasting for Easter? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's, okay. that's the and, part. <laughs> yes. So you told me you had two small children. So you have a Well, now they're three. already grown <laughs> up. <laughs> they're grown up now. So you yes. have a pair of twins as main characters. Mm -hmm. Did you yeah. mean to appeal to both boys and girls? Do you think that if writers choose a girl character, they appeal only to girls? And if they choose a boy character, they appeal only to boys? Um, no, that was not the main reason. The main reason was that um, I wanted the interaction between the two of them. Because, you know, uh, Lottie is always very kind, very nice, is very girlish. And uh, Luke, Luke is a little bit you know, a, a little naughty boy. So you have the, the little, the interaction between the two and that was very nice to, to, to um, in the story, uh, show them both sides. Uh, children can recognize themselves or in the, in the other or in, in, in Luke or in Lottie. So I think that's the most important uh, thing why I chose two children. Uh, was I correct that they are twins? Yes, they are twins. <laughs> uh, are your children twins as well? No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. But um, yeah, you illustrate your books yourself, which means uh, there is a perfect symbiosis between text and pictures, because obviously you already know how they should look like and you don't have to pass that on to an illustrator. How did you decide you wanted to illustrate your own books? Did you study illustration? You told me you took a uh, course in the US? 
Yeah, no, I, I that was the only course. It was aquarelle of flowers, so <laughs> never <laughs> something about picture books. But uh, for me, the book is one piece. It's not a uh, text and illustrations apart, but it's something as I see it as a whole. So during the story, sometimes I, I uh, change some things so that it can become one part. So I don't know if that will, would work for me to have someone uh, writing for me or uh, illustrating for me. I, I really like to do it on my own because I'm in my little small world here sitting uh, behind my desk. And, you know, that's that's very nice. What is it? What the disadvantage is, is that there's no one who can correct me or <laughs> yeah, the publisher does it, but it's, it's not that there's someone saying, Hey, shouldn't you do this or that? So I have to be very careful that I'm still, um, yeah, right. that, that I'm you, still enough. <laughs> yeah. Do you illustrate in parallel or do you first write the text and then you start with the illustration? You don't just write a sentence and then illustrate and so oh, no, <laughs> no. Uh, first I um, think about the story the te- and, and I, I write down in a few steps what I'm going to uh, 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 tell about and then I make some sketches and then I go to the publisher and we, we talk about it and if, if the story is okay if the drawings are okay and uh, when everything is done then I make the text so I, I know what it's all about, but the text is even later or while I'm working on the book. Yeah. So the topics are entirely chosen by you. You don't get suggestions from your public. No, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> yeah. I always try to find something that, that is appealing to little children. So something cheerful and something nice and something they would like to do, also like to do. I think that's 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 quite amusing. Um, I loved something in particular about your illustrations. <laughs> At the beginning of the book, for example, let's take this one. Um, there's an image with the house in the morning. Yes. Yes. And then <laughs> so, uh, at the end, there's an image with the house in the evening. Yes. And sometimes almost nothing changes except maybe, you know, uh, the sky, it's uh, redder at dark or it rains. Yes. Uh, so this is a very nice touch to the entire series. Was it your idea? Yes, it was <laughs> because I wanted to have, uh, you know, have a cozy book that the children felt at home. So I wanted to show them the house of Luke and Lottie and in, in summer, in winter, all seasons. So they can and they all I always use the same house, the same home, the same um, kitchen and living room so that they really have a safe place where the adventures take place. So I think that's important for that age group. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. What are your personal values that you want to pass on to children in your books? Oh, that's a difficult question. (laughs) I'll let you think about it. Yeah, I, I first of all, I want to present them a, a nice world, a cheerful, warm, loving, caring world where they can, um, where they feel safe and happy and, you know, just um, that they, when they're reading the book, they really feel good. That is something that I, I would, um, yeah, that I care about, that children are really feeling good and happy in their lives. So that's what I'm hoping to, yeah, to reach. <laughs> that's one of my goals. <laughs> so, and that they, there's still some space open for their fantasy. So that they, they see a room that they say, oh, I also have a bear or no, I have a train in my room or, you know, that they that there is a conversation possible when they, they are looking at the pictures. And, and for example, when teachers are looking with them into the book that other stories can develop while looking at the book. So it's just... Yeah. Just, uh, uh, yeah. it's not a, a story like, whoa, this is very emotional or whatever. It's a starting point for little children to explore the world. Yeah, so uh, you told me that you made uh, Letty and uh, look a bit different 
So what uh, have you lent them some of your children's personal traits? <laughs> yes, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, not not uh, too much because you know they're not um, not like in an adult book. In, a, in an adult book, the the characters are very uh, uh, in detail. It's not like that in uh, for Luke and Lottie. So it's I'm I'm already happy that a lot of children can recognize themselves in one of the two uh, children. So that that would be great. Yeah. What was your favorite book as a child, or you know, I don't know, maybe favorite books at different ages? Oh, that's also a difficult <laughs> one. <laughs> So I'm uh, I'm a fan of uh, Annie M. G. Schmidt, of course. Um, well, now I'm I'm not well. I'm reading a lot, but I'm not looking at the names on the books, <laughs> which is a pity. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you should know your competition. <laughs> oh well, no, it's never competition because there's room enough for every one of us. No. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. a fab fabulous motto to go, you know, to, <laughs> to abide by in life. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, have you ever read those books to your children? Because I read some of my favorite books to my children, uh, some of my favorite books in my childhood, and they didn't like them. Oh. <laughs> they prefer books where mostly nice things happen. You know, because when we were children, yeah. uh, the literature wasn't. That so nice. All, all that nice and yes. sweet. And do you think children's literature, especially for small children, should only be about nice things? Um, no, they they uh, it, it's not necessary, I think. But the ones I write are nice. <laughs> but you choose to write maybe, only maybe. about it. <laughs> maybe one day I write something completely different. <laughs> but for now, it's just. I think that the world is 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 actually uh, changing a lot, and there are a lot of uh, not, uh, bad things happening. So children now are already encountering a lot of difficulties and sometimes difficult situations. So why again presenting them in books? They have lovely books about that, but I don't uh, feel uh, ready right now to write those books. I need a, a bit more maturity or grow up a bit a little bit more <laughs> for writing those books. <laughs> uh, do you only write picture books so books for children age three to five or five to seven? Um, no, uh, I write from uh, the very little ones as zero to three years, three to five. And I also wrote a book uh, seven, eight year for seven oh. or eight years. Yes. Can you tell us what it's about? I would well, be interested in finding out. Yeah, it's about uh, guide dogs because uh, I also I always have uh, guide dog puppies in house. So uh, till they're aged 14 months and then they're going for the specific training program. So I always have uh, dogs in the house. <laughs> that's, that's very interesting. I, I'd really like to know more about that. So you you keep them, you raise them in your house yes. until they are ready to go for training. So this is a yes. real thing. It's like a job, <laughs> taking yes. care of puppies. Yes. <laughs> I, I always try not talking about that. <laughs> This but it's song? also a passion and you know like writing and drawing is, is is a passion and i'm always at home so that was perfect for raising those little puppies so yes that <laughs> and sounds i wrote like an ideal that. job you raise puppies and you write children's books so yes. who wouldn't want to be you now <laughs> yes that's right and of course I'm very lucky yeah you work from home did you always uh, right or have you had another job before yes i had another job first i worked in pharmaceutics a pharmaceutical company and then i was a teacher oh, in... you were a teacher for yes. smaller children no 16 till 18 years old wow so high schoolers teenagers yes, biology and chemistry so <laughs> it's completely different yes it's completely different you should write a novel about that <laughs> oh no 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 <laughs> but i really like that 
but it's it's different because you have a lot of interactions and when you're writing books i need um quiet in my head so i don't want to be doing other things i just want to concentrate on the writing and the um, drawing so i can't combine the two of them i try to but that's not working for me so one of your Oh, a piece of advice that you would give to young writers would be to just focus on writing, you know? If... Just go for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, when it's your passion, you just, but, but that's my advice to everyone. Just go after your passion and make your dreams come true, like my editor says, a publisher <laughs> says. So that's, that sounds like a great advice. Yes. What, uh, so you raised your own children. They are older now. You interacted with a lot of children. What do you think changed in children's education in the past 20 to 30 years? And how did children's books contribute to that? Uh, I think that uh, children can express themselves more. And I think it's a good thing. And books are helping with that. So um, I, I, I I'm always very happy when I come in classes when I, where I read the books and the little ones are really interacting and they're not just sitting there, they're, they're asking things and that the exploration of the world is, it's allowed now. Yeah, so I think it's great. Yeah, that's a wonderful conclusion that, yeah. you know, we are allowing our children to explore yeah. more, which... Yes. I'm surprised it was the same in Belgium <laughs> 20, 30 years ago. I was thinking yes. that, uh, yeah. Uh, do you have, um, I don't know, some uh, reading guidance to how to read your books for teachers, for example, or for parents? Well, <laughs> that's a very good question <laughs> because I always think that uh, teachers are very good readers. So when I come in classes, I always think, wow, they, they can give me tips and hints <laughs> and tips and tricks <laughs> instead of me giving them uh, hints and tricks. So, well, just, just everyone reads the way they are. So you can't say to, to someone, do it this way or do it that way, just do it your own way. I think that's the best way. So that's the only advice I can give. <laughs> Did you hide anything in the illustrations that maybe we should find or pay attention to? I know some illustrators do that. You know, they hide oh. something, it's called an Easter egg, like something hidden and we should find yeah. it. Some things, sometimes some, something happens, you know, for example, uh, in the Christmas book, um, when I'm illustrating, <laughs> you're already searching. <laughs> so when I, I uh, say, oh, I need to, um, to uh, put, uh, you know, um, the thing from the pine. I, the cones I, or yes, the yes. pine cones, yeah. So I say, if I, uh, oh, I, I need to put one there. Sometimes I pick some from Google, you know, just that I don't forget to draw it. So there's one in the book that I forgot to draw. <laughs> that is still a picture. So sorry. Really? Oh, my God. I have to find that. I'm going to, you know, uh, once we close this call, I'm going to take the book. <laughs> And take my son and we're going to find him. Oh, yes. <laughs> Although oh. he's probably going to say, Mommy, but you just, uh, you know, you just hid away my Christmas books because you <laughs> won't stop reading Christmas oh, books. My, so, yeah, my, I own had children, to... my own children always say, oh, I'm, oh Mom, you, you were lazy, you know, you don't want to draw it. I say, yes, I want to, but I forgot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that this happened. is such a funny story. I'm so glad you shared it with us. Of course. <laughs> um, because you write children's literature, did you ever feel that um, it's like the Cinderella of literature, especially the one for small children, three to five, maybe that it's not being taken seriously enough? Oh, uh, well, I, I never think a lot about those things because, you know, I try to be like, in my mind, I try to be like a child and a child is not questioning too much. 
So I'm not taking myself too seriously when I'm <laughs> writing books. So I just enjoy it. And I, I, I like to, to create a world, a little world and little characters, you know, and that, that's the only thing that I'm not really uh, thinking a lot about it, actually. <laughs> so... Yeah. So since you mentioned that, do you think there are rules when it comes to writing picture books? Like, do you think there are things or topics that can't be put into a picture book? Um, there are some rules, of course. We have to be nice to everyone, I, I <laughs> guess. Yeah, but it's it's the same in, in the real world. So that's that's what I'm trying to do. And also, when you look at the picture books, they see, but it's uh, it's not, it's the um, they always have the same amount of pages. So we also have to count the pages and that are the rules. But what's in the book, I think that's free. It's, you just need to, you know, the, the, the reader can decide whether it, he will read it or not. So I think um, it's, it's good to, for everyone to have freedom, also for the writers, oh, but yeah. also for the readers. So no real rules <laughs> <laughs> that's such a nice thought how did you choose uh, your books for your children where when they were younger so what criteria did you have when you went into the bookshop and you bought some some books? no criteria no at all. no they could choose because you know every topic is good when the interest of a child is there or there they they must be free to choose whatever they want to read so did you let your children choose their books? Yes. Or did you, yeah, you didn't choose yes. for them, you know? Well, sometimes you can make it Because suggest. this book is very educational and you have oh, to Oh, it. no. <laughs> so you can make a suggestion that you can also always do. Like, don't you want to try this one? Or, but at the end, there's, they're deciding for themselves, No. Yeah, so how do we get to read children that will be readers when they grow up? Be, be a reader yourself as a parent. I think that's a good start. When, when you're reading as a parent, you, you set an example and you can, you can make a, a, it a very nice thing every day, you know, like having breakfast every day so you can read every day. I think that's very good. Not not like uh, you have to, but it's make it something that is uh, wonderful and nice and spending time together and just maybe five minutes is, is enough, you know. Some children like to play outside, so you don't have to read hours with them. So just make it nice and adjust it to the child and, and what they want. What about when they grow up? Because you work with teenagers and you know how difficult they can be to yes. motivate. Yes, I have a teenager as well. Yes. I have two kids. Mm -hmm. And um, she was a, a huge reader. She loved to read. We have hundreds of books in our house. And I used to read to her every day. And then she grew up. At some point, I had baby number two. And mm -hmm. of course, our time together for reading was uh, decreasing. Yes. Uh, she started reading on her own. But then as she grew older, she started reading less and less. She now reads, she has a ritual, she reads every day, but uh, it's not the same. She kind of lost her passion and I don't know how to make her get it. Now, how old is she now? 13. Oh, that passion will come back. <laughs> okay. <Yes. laughs> no worries. You seem, you seem so sure about it. Oh, yes, because, you know, inside the book is so much to explore that you can't explore in the real world. So you have the world at your feet when you're having books around. So now 13 years and 14, 15, uh, like teenagers, they are, they are exploring the real world. But afterwards, they will come back to books. I'm, I'm pretty sure about it <laughs> when they're getting older. That no. makes me feel a lot better, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, and, and actually I've been discussing this with a lot of people and I think mm. no one ever put it so, you know, plainly and you <laughs> seem so sure, so I'm going to believe you. <laughs> oh, yes, that's good. <laughs> that's good. But for that, um, it's, it's again the freedom that everyone has to do what they want. So, but as a parent, you can you can make suggestions. Some 
parents suggest uh, that children go uh, study or doing sports or, you know, you can, you can show them the world and they have to choose for themselves. But you have to explore everything with the children. So also with the book. So it's, it's very nice that parents take time to let children explore the world and also the world in the book. So yeah, that's you great. did your job. <laughs> Yeah, I hope so. You know, I also translate books. So my daughter loves to read the books that I translate. So and she gives me feedback. Oh, Do your children yeah. ever give you feedback for your books? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> A lot and of And is it always good? <laughs> no, <laughs> they're very critical. <laughs> and they all always ask, oh, mom, are you really going to put that in the book? Do you think that's good enough? <laughs> you know, <laughs> they, they're teasing me, you know, like keeping me awake. So I say, oh, well, then I have to rethink sometimes. <laughs> but, but at least they have learned to offer constructive feedback, you know. Yes, yes, and of this course. This will be of great help in their oh, future yes. careers. Of course, ex especially because they're now um, 20 years old. So they're <laughs> already young adults. So <laughs> very yeah. critical. In about 10 years, they will probably read your books to their children. So. Oh, that would be a dream. <laughs> yes, and you, you will be the dream grandmother because you oh. will not only tell the stories, but you will also, you know, have them at hand and show them the illustrations and all your work. So, And baking cookies. <laughs> of course, of course. That's, you know, the, the ideal kind yes. of grandmother. You know, it's, that's another story. <laughs> when you look at the cookies in the Christmas book that are on the cover, I baked them myself <laughs> and then I took a picture and I put them with Photoshop in the book. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <So they're> real cookies. <laughs> and they were dec decorated yeah. when you took a picture? Wow. Yes. You're good. Yeah, you're very good. My gingerbread <laughs> men are never that perfect. But I can Photoshop them. So that's an advantage. <laughs> yeah, you know, I once asked my daughter, what will her memories be of our Christmases together? Because I have different memories, you know, like I remember the food and the preparations, but it's a bit different now in the modern world because I don't do that much. And uh, she said, uh, I'll definitely remember us baking together. So, oh, uh, that's great. Yeah. So it's fantastic that uh, you managed to do that with your <laughs> children and also put it in a book and that you. You, you know, in this particular book, the Christmas one, you encourage parents and children to bake together because this way they can create memories. And reading together is another memory to be, yes. to be made with children. So um, I will ask you now to send a message to our Romanian readers and uh, maybe encourage them to read as much as possible. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. As much much as possible in the in the best uh, because I think it's it's very nice to bond with your children through reading. So it's it's so good. <laughs> yeah. So why don't you why don't you convince our Romanian readers to read your books? Oh, oh. Do I have to convince them? Oh, that's so difficult. <laughs> you have to sell your own product. Oh, normally I'm just sitting behind my desk <laughs> and drawing. I'm not used to have commercial. I don't have commercial abilities, you know. <laughs> so, um, well, yeah, it's always nice when I hear that other people are reading my book. So that makes me very happy. And, and you know, I'm, I'm proud of it. So and now I dare to be proud because before I was shy. So I, I had I thought, oh, they're reading it. Oh, really? They're reading it, you know, like this. So now I'm proud when someone is reading it. So I hope, I hope, of course, that the people in your country will read my books, of course, and that the children also will enjoy Luc and Lot. Luc, Luc and Lotche is the tier. Eh? Uh, so um, yeah, well, let's hope <laughs> they're, they're, they will read it <laughs> and I'm enjoy sure. it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it will be like that. Thank you, Ruth, so much. It's been such a pleasure talking to you. I've learned a lot of things oh, about, really? uh, yeah, about life in general, about raising oh. children and about the writing books. Okay. And um, it was nice sharing this uh, conversation with you. Thank you for agreeing to do this interview.
Thank you so much for your nice questions and uh, um, sorry for my English, which, which isn't too good. But... Your English is perfect, don't okay. worry. At all. Well, anyway, it was very, very nice and I'm very happy with the invitation and I hope that a lot of people will enjoy what we said to each other and that they will enjoy the books, of course. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>